Well, I thought I'd have a quick look at um, UV mapping and how I've uh, changed it uh, uh, to use uh, UV mapped on planes for uh, a promo that we're doing at work. So anyway, I have this picture of the talent and nice high-res image. <coughs> Um, but the image in the promo is very static so what I needed to do was separate uh, the foreground from the background which I did with a quick UV uh, sorry uh, alpha matte paint uh, just in paint mode um, selecting let's see erase alpha tool and just paint over the top sort of like that and uh, then I also used GIMP to clone in the background so if whoops let me swap over comp have a look at this have a look at one of these not getting much at the moment <coughs> resolution image I probably should have uh, tried it out at half res first and now I've ended up with uh, a very hot a very memory sapping sort of uh, image so let's just have a quick look at the size of the image it's not showing me anything at the moment Let's try another. Here we go. So zoom that back up again. Okay, so there's my painted out background. You can see I've removed most of most of um, the talent from the foreground and just cloned in a whole bunch of other stuff. I actually did it in GIMP. I'm sure I could have done that in uh, in uh, Blender with the clone tool as well and then it's composited onto an animated background uh, where is that there it is and that's the old video that we're replacing I've just matted out with a bunch of shapes the white area down the bottom and uh, the blue area in the background we're putting that box over the top wherever it is oh too big this one yes so we're putting that over the animated background now what I've done from there, what I've done to put her over the top is animate the talent with uh, a um, map to map to the UV image with the alpha mat onto a plane uh, with the GL uh, OpenGL display on. So scroll down here and in display, oh, I'm on texture display. And on multi texture mode using GLSL rendering. Is that right? Anyway, go into camera mode and I'm shooting that plane. What I've done is in edit mode, I've selected a region of verts that I want to be able to apply uh, movement to uh, for that area of the image. Then I've gone to spacebar and hook and I've added a new, whoops hook to new object and when you click on that it generates a new empty you name the empty as I've done over here Just edit our tab mode look at this, these are all the different empties that I have and with their associated animations <coughs> each one of those empties I have applied, ooh that's a bit hard to read really isn't it each one of those empties is a, a hook modifier and you can see that I have the name of each hook on there and their attendant force or the amount of work that they do on the animation so if I play the animation you can see I've got I've got an empty around the middle of her neck as a f uh, pivot point for the head and the head empty has a constraint um, so that it does a rotation move around this pivot point then I also have let's see the animation running loop around so she nods her head a little bit if you pay particular attention she says smile let's watch the smile smile up 
eyebrow raise as well. So it loops around, you just might see the eyebrow raise a little bit. Up it goes. Uh, and the other thing I've done is given her a little bit of breathing so you can see the chest is moving up and down a little bit. It looked very strange uh, in the um, live vision and her shoulder drops as she turns her head. So all of that just to give a little bit of movement on top of the final composite, which I haven't finished yet. Um, but it's great to be able to play all this back in real time. It's really terrific. And because it's a high-res photo, you can actually get in really close. It's terrific. There's the eyebrow move. <laughs> There you go. So, as I say, I haven't haven't quite completed it yet. Uh, if we go back to composite, it's really just a matter of um, sticking the uh, rendered output. Hello, rendered output. Perform a render. Taking that alpha channel, applying a bit of pre-multiply on top. And uh, there you go. The um, only problem I've had is this little bit of pre-multiply bleed. I've got pre-multiply turned on, but for some reason I can't get rid of that even with a bit of feathering. But uh, due to the high-res nature of the image, I've still got the hair showing through there, which is all terrific. I had to turn off mip map though. I was getting some uh, heavy blurring. It looks a bit soft because it's an SD um, final render. It's only 750 by 576. Uh, 720 by 576 so it all looks a little bit soft at the end of the day but much sharper than it was um, but yes this little halo I'm not sure how to get rid of but uh, there you go hopefully uh, the client will be happy anyway uh, just thought I'd show you what I'm doing with uh, with uh, GLSL um, real-time renders um, just for demoing and testing and then applying that in final comps you actually can run this in the VSE let's see if I've got one in the VSE Here's the image stack that I've got as a test in the VSA. Playing the video back. Real time with the key. Oh, it's dropping frames because it's trying to play back the animation in the background. Hmm probably won't be able to see it. It plays a little bit better when I haven't got all these other apps running at the same time. But you can see if I scrub it, it's a little bit better performance. So I can put the box in the back there. I probably could have laid all that up and done it all in the VSA. Let's see, do I get... Oh, I have a hard edge though around, around, the, uh, around the alpha mat. So probably wouldn't have been as successful as the um, composite, I don't think, from nodes. There you go.